Welcome guys to episode 3 of my podcast, where in episode 3 we're going to be reviewing the 2018 Italian Grand Prix. Now though, let's go through the midfield teams. First off, McLaren and again, so, so poor. Fernando Alonso though, in the race, was actually doing quite well. I think he was in the points at one point in those first five just manic laps but then had to retire from the race. And Van Dorn didn't have the worst race of his season, finishing in P12, but he was never going to score points because he's looked very slow for a very, very long time. Now, and Neb, I think your assessment of McLaren at Spa is pretty much going to be the same of their, of their racing here, I guess. I thought this weekend they were a bit better than the, what they were at Spa. I think Alonso, if he hadn't retired with his electrical fault, I believe it was, he he probably would have scored a point or two points perhaps. But so unfortunate whenever someone seems to be putting in a good drive for a McLaren, they seem to be getting reliability issues like Van Dorn at Hungary and Alonso at Monaco. The McLaren drivers can't get a break with this awful car and sometimes awful reliability. Next up is Renault, who were very surprising with Carlos Sainz in P8. And I have to say, Nib, in terms of the teams, they have to be the biggest surprise of this weekend. No one thought Carlos Sainz would be up in P7 in qualifying and then be so competitive in the race in P8 and be fighting with the Haas of Grosjean, and the two Force Indias, very impressive from Renault. Yeah, certainly a bit of a surprise by Renault here at the Italian Grand Prix. In the end, Science was 20 seconds off the racing point Force Indias and Roman Grosjean, who obviously got disqualified at the end of the race. So it was a good weekend for Renault, a lot better than what they expected and what we expected. And... With the disqualification of Grosjean, they extend their lead in the Constructors' Championship over Haas. So, a good weekend for Renault. Indeed, they do. Next up is Force India. Now, qualifying for Force India was not that great. They were in P8 with Esteban Ocon, which I thought he could have done better. And Perez was all the way down in P16, so not a great qualifying. But then in the race... The race pace of the Force Indy was very good. I wasn't necessarily surprised by Perez and what he did in the race because I think I said in my race watch along in the build-up to that race that in 2012, Perez, I think, finished in second after starting like 14th on the grid. So he definitely had or has the pedigree of doing such a thing. But Nib, Force India, they, they, they're making so much progress in the constructors. Do you think they'll beat McLaren? Do you think they'll finish miles ahead of McLaren? Do you think they might get close to Renault and Haas? I think they'll comfortably finish ahead of McLaren. I don't think you can really question that. The amount of points they've scored in the last two races has been superb. And they've got a brand new update coming for the Singapore Grand Prix. So that should improve their performance even more. And it's quite remarkable to think if their points weren't excluded they would now be fourth in the Constructors' Championship. So you've just got to give Force India and everyone there in the team a tremendous amount of praise, how they've come back after the whole financial struggles that they've had, and they're getting the results. And a terrific drive by Perez and Ocon this weekend, and they deserved sixth and seventh because Grosjean certainly didn't have the pace which the Force Indies had. I will say about Force India, they are one of the best teams on the grid at getting the the results that are needed, but also results that are unexpected. For example, Perez in Baku this season. They're very, very good at that. But next up is Williams. For once, Williams were actually good. I did not see a points finish coming. I thought they would be better than say, a team like McLaren, but I didn't think they'd get out of Q1 with both cars and get a car into Q3. I did not see that coming, but great race from Williams. And Nib, for Sergio Sorokin, great news. His first points finish in F1, and he does deserve it. 
yeah, as as you mentioned, Sergei Sorokin certainly does deserve this point. He's been certainly a bright light in um, Williams' very dim lights so far this season. He's been a great refreshment for the team over the usually complaining Lance Stroll. But we didn't see that this weekend from Lance Stroll. We've seen a big beaming Canadian smile. So that was good to see him not complaining too much. And it was a great lap by him in qualifying to get them into P8. Well, it was Q2 the qualified in P8, but qualified 10th in Q3. So a great performance there by Stroll. And certainly very good performance by both Williams drivers in the race. And with the disqualification of Grosjean, Sorotkin got 10th, and as I've just mentioned, he thoroughly, thoroughly deserves that. Next up is Toro Rosso, who in qualifying with Pierre Gasly in P9 looked as though they were going to have a good race, but as soon as Hartley was eliminated before he even got down to Turn 1 and Gasly had a poor start and was going off the track a lot, it never really seemed as though Toro Rosso were ever going to score points and ended up having quite a poor race in terms of pace, with Pierre Gasly. And Nib, I'll be honest, I'm quite surprised because, again, I thought going into the race they would build on what they did in qualifying, which was a very impressive performance with Pierre Gasly. Well, on Saturday, Mystic Chazza was on full show with the great <laughs> prediction of uh, Pierre Gasly for a good qualifying. But sadly, the race just didn't really go for him. Had a poor start, as you've mentioned, then had a bit of a scrap with Ricardo and made him made it quite hard for him to pass, which was a bit surprising considering he is in the sister team. And they nearly had a big accident. Thankfully, Ricardo just managed to get it slowed down under the braking. Otherwise, that might have been a nasty incident. And poor Brendan Hartley again. The guy just can't get any luck. I don't know what it is with our, us trans-Tasman fellows. We always get bad luck. It's it's quite ridiculous. But what looked like a quite positive weekend for Toro Rosso ended up being not a great weekend. And now Force India are ahead of them in the constructors. And they've only done two races. So not that good news for Toro Rosso. But probably what we actually expected going into the weekend, taking out Saturday's performance. Next up is Haas, who, you know, the result after the Italian Grand Prix, it looked so good for them with Grosjean getting P6. And after that race, before he was disqualified for an illegal flaw, Haas, I think, were level on points with Renault in the constructors in fourth place. But then he was disqualified for that illegal flaw. And I think Nib, from what I've seen, it does look as though Haas broke the rules and that they're just going to have to take this you know, take this punishment. Yeah, tremendously unfortunate for Roman Grosjean, who had a great race being able to hold off the Force Indias. But sadly, after they were warned in Hungary about this potential issue with the floor and that they should change it before the Italian Grand Prix, but sadly they didn't and were open to protest by Renault, who of course were going to protest so they could get an upper hand in the Constructors' Championship battle. And thankfully, that will be fixed for the Singaporean Grand Prix as they've got an update package to Haas. So it'll be quite interesting to see where Renault, Force India and Haas will be during the Singapore Grand Prix with all of the updates that those three teams are going to bring. But on to Kevin Magnussen's race, he had quite an unlucky race when there was some contact with Perez. And after that, his race was pretty much over. He went on the mediums and his pace was absolutely nowhere. And I was a bit surprised that they didn't retire the car just to save some mileage on the engine. And finally is Sauber. Now, they had a poor weekend, but I don't think... We're really going to discuss that because there has been some big news for one of their drivers, Charles Leclerc. It hasn't been confirmed. This is, I would say, a big rumour, I guess you could say, is that Charles Leclerc, it looks as though, is definitely going to Ferrari for 2019. Now, if that is the case, he does deserve it, even though 
you know, it's only going to be his second year in F1. He does deserve that his performances from Baku until Silverstone was so, so good, outperforming a car which should not have been in that kind of position. Hasn't been that great in the last few races, but he has had some issues which have affected his results. Nearby, I know you're a massive Leclerc fan, and if he does go to Ferrari... How do you think he'll do? I think at Ferrari, he is going to give Vettel quite a shock. We could have another Daniel Ricciardo 2014 upset on Vettel on our hands next season. By the looks of things with Leclerc, looking like he will go to Ferrari after reports come out this weekend that Sergio Marchione, before he sadly passed away, that he had agreed a contract with Charles Leclerc, and now it come out on Sunday that Leclerc had been selected by the new Ferrari president over Kimi Raikkonen to be in the car for next season. We don't obviously don't know if that's true at the moment, but it was by the German Autosport, who are quite reliable. So we'll see in the coming weeks and months to see whether or not this is Kimi Raikkonen's last season and whether or not Charles Leclerc will be in the Sauber next year or whether or not he'll be in the Ferrari. But onto their actual race, they had a bit of a better race than what they had in their qualifying, but overall quite a disappointing weekend for Sauber. Going into the weekend, you certainly would have expected them to be in the points with their very powerful Ferrari engine. Thankfully, Marcus Ericsson was okay after his big crash that he had on Friday, where his DRS didn't shut properly into turn one. And it's not too much else to say on sale, but quite a disappointing weekend, actually. Finally, let's get on to the questions. And first off, it's from Caleb, who asks, what is going to be the Singapore pecking order now for me? I would go Ferrari. Second fastest, I'm not sure, because Red Bull weren't that great at Hungary. So I think for now, to be safe, I'm going to go Mercedes just ahead because I think the Mercedes and Ferrari power units are so more you know, powerful than the Renault in the back of the Red Bull. That might be the difference, but I wouldn't be surprised if Red Bull ended up you know, on the second row or maybe on the front row with one of their cars. Fourth fastest, I would probably go Renault. I think Singapore is a track which does suit their car. Fifth fastest, um, probably go Force India. Sixth fastest, I really don't know. I really don't know. I think, I think Toro Rosso might be very competitive with whoever is slowest out of Renault, Force India and Haas. Do not count out Toro Rosso. They are going to be very quick at Singapore. They have a great record at that track. Ever since, you know, the Singapore Grand Prix started, they have been scoring points at that circuit. Uh, Seventh fastest, I would probably go... Yeah, Toro Rosso maybe. Say with uh, Haas and sixth. And then eighth, I would go McLaren. Ninth is Sauber. And then Williams, last of all, Nib. What would you go with? Do you think Red Bull will be better than I'm expecting? Well, I've got to be optimistic here, let's face it, because I haven't I haven't had very much joy the second half of this season so far. So Ferrari first should be first. We yeah. all know how that goes at the moment. But Red Bull in second, Mercedes third, with probably Hamilton getting fourth or third. Renault in fourth, Haas in fifth, Force India in sixth, Tor Rosso in seventh, McLaren eighth, with potentially Alonso getting a point because it's just Alonso, and Sauber and Williams in ninth and tenth, respectively. The next question again from Caleb is, can Red Bull challenge for the win in Singapore? I think they can, but I think... A lot of things need to go their way for that to happen. If it rains again like it did last year, then if there's no, you know, uh, sandwich-type crash at the start, then Red Bull should 
be competitive, but yeah, but we know that at Singapore, it's so hard to pass if you're not, you know, the fastest car on the grid. So when it comes to Red Bull trying to win that race, if they're not the fastest, do you think they have realistically enough, you know, pace to win? Probably not. If Red Bull don't qualify on pole, which I don't think they would, the only way for them to pass Ferrari on track, potentially, of course, hypothetically, this is would be with an undercut or an overcut and the chance of that very unlikely. So I don't see much of a chance for Red Bull to win because their engine power just isn't good enough with the Renault engine to be able to challenge Mercedes or Ferrari down the straight to be able to overtake them on track. And the final question from Caleb is who will be McLaren's second driver? Now, thankfully, that has been announced. It's going to be Lando Norris. And before we move on to the final question, Nib, what do you think about that news? I think, uh, you know, I'm, I'm happy for Lando. I think he'll maybe do better than people are, are expecting. And how do you think he's going to do in 2019? I think he'll do all right. But what do you think? Yeah, very happy for Lando. He's a great guy who interacts with the community, trolling some People are saying he's overrated on Twitter today, which was quite hilarious. And hopefully he has a good season because he, he's just a, a nice dude. And I want to see nice people do well in the sport. So good luck to Lando for 2019. Right, that's been it for this Italian Grand Prix podcast. And again, Nib, thank you very much. And hopefully, Singapore, we get more drama in this championship battle. Yep, hopefully we do. Because it the Italian Grand Prix certainly didn't disappoint. But anyway, guys, that has been it for this video. Don't forget to hit the like button and subscribe for more content like this. Also, don't forget to join our Discord server. There's a link below down in the description. Also, don't forget to follow me on Twitter and check out my website. Comment down below what you thought of this video and comment down below what did you think of what we discussed so far in this podcast. Please comment down below what you think about those topics. And until next time, it's been me, Chazzer HD. Goodbye.